The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There's a rabbi in Eretz his name is Rabbi Tosig. He's sitting in a waiting office for a, a, a doctor. All of a sudden, he sees a fellow walk in. No kippah, no tzitzit. Regular, secular Israeli guy off the street. The guy sits down, reaches in his bag, pulls out Masechet Yevamot. Opens up the Gemara, starts learning. In the waiting room. Now, anyone here who's learned Gemara will know that there's three Masechtot that are the hardest Masechtot in all of Shas. What are the three Masechtot? Yevamot, Nida, Eruvin. Spells the word Ani. Poor, poor guy. Because that's an area of riches, which the Torah is indeed riches, right? Which is very hard to acquire. So this guy with no kippah, no sissy, is sitting there, plugging away a Gemara Yevamot. It's, it's, and it's hard because it's one of those things that you need to, you need to stay engaged. Okay, one second. Reuven and Shimon, two brothers, they marry Rachel and Leah, and Rachel and Leah, this, and you have to follow all the relationships, and they're second, they're related to Shniot, Shlishiot, the back and forth, and then they did this, and they did that. They're complicated cases that you need to kind of focus, and follow, and understand. He sees the guy, he can't believe it. Anyway, after five minutes, he sees the guy learning, the guy gets up, walks up to the rabbi, and he says, you look like a rabbi, he says, uh, I am. He says, do you mind helping me with this Gemara? <laughs> the rabbi, by the way, every rabbi will tell you, there's always a moment of horror where a person who's clearly not religious is coming over to you to ask you a question, and you're a little afraid that you might not know the answer. <laughs> He's carrying Gemara, if you're not in it, and you're not holding there, you didn't just, you're not, it's not fresh, you know, so he feels like a little bit, anyway, you read Baruch Hashem, he reads the Gemara, he knows exactly what it's talking about, he explains the answer. Before the guy goes to sit there, he goes, but tell me, you don't look to me to be a very religious guy. How does a, he says I'm not? He says how does a not so religious guy walk into a, a, a waiting room sitting and learning give up by himself on his free time? The guy says, "I'll tell you the truth. I live in an apartment building. One day I noticed a bunch of religious people walking into the building, going into the apartment next door to mine. I didn't think anything of it. These religious people they do their thing, but then the next day." Again, in the evening, a whole bunch of people come, they go to the apartment again. I'm trying to think to myself, is, a, is there a celebration? Is there a party I wasn't invited to? What's going on here? Again the next day, and then again the next day. A week goes by. After a week, I woke up to one of the guys, and I said, what's going on here? Every day, I see you guys, 7 p.m., you come here, you go to this apartment. The guy says, listen, there's a guy here, he's an avrech, he studies in Kolel, young rabbi, or rabbi in training, whichever. And he gives a Gemara Shi'ur, he gives a class in Daf Yomi, uh, where they learn a page every day from, uh, from the Gemara. The guy never heard of Gemara, he doesn't know Daf Yomi. But if this is happening every day and people are coming, he thinks maybe, you know, maybe it'll be something I'm interested in. So he knocks on the door and he says to the Avrech, he says, I hear you have this class going on. Would you mind, I'm curious, would you mind if I sit in? The guy says, sure, no problem. He goes, but you know, I'm not religious. Is it okay, like, if I come as I am, like, without... My kippah, and I don't want to come in and, you know, and pretend I'm someone that I'm not. Is that okay? Well, I don't want to offend anybody. So he says, sure, no problem, don't worry. Hey, a guy comes in, nobody says a word, they give him a gemara, he sits down on his very first day, the guy says, I asked the rabbi a question, the rabbi said, wow, what a question. This question you're asking, it appears in the Pnei Yehoshua, very complicated, a very deep book. And he opened up the Pnei Yehoshua and he showed me, he asked the question. I couldn't believe it. The second day, again, I asked a very good question. He said, that question is in the Marasha. Again, a very complicated, very high understanding book, question in the back. If someone, t- if you're learning Gemara and the rabbi tells you the Marasha's question, or the Pnei Yehoshua's answer, you're doing well for yourself. He goes, I felt great. Two days, three days, four days, still no kippah. I kept thinking someone was going to say something. But nobody said anything. And I'm enjoying it. I love it. The rabbi says, okay, it's amazing. He says, and you know what? I'm months later and not one person has, has said even a word to me about my kippah or lack thereof. Hey, the rabbi said, wow, what a special rabbi. What's his name? The guy tells him his name. 
as soon as he finishes his appointment, he looks up in the phone book, you guys remember those, he finds this rabbi's name from this neighborhood, he calls him up, he says, I just want to tell you, I just met this guy, he's not religious, he's sitting here in the, in the, uh, in the, or in the waiting room of the doctor, whips out a gemera yevamot, studying himself, asked me a question, I gave him the answer, and I asked him, he tells me this amazing story about how no one has said a word to him about his kippah. No one has asked him to put on tzitzit. No one told him to go get a black hat. No one told him anything. They just welcomed him in. They made him feel part of the group. And they said, if he wants to learn Torah, I want to tell you, I'm so impressed. I'm a rabbi for years, he says. It's an amazing thing what you did. You're so special. He says, just tell me, promise me one thing. He says, you know, as time goes on, it's going to get a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more difficult for you or for the people in the shi'ur not to say anything. You're going to just want to say something. Tell the guys. He says, Rabbi, we beat you to it. We already took on amongst us on the very first day that he showed up that if he's here for 10 years without a kippah, no one's going to say a word. Every person in the shi'ur, we're all on the same page. Welcome him as he is. See him as he is. Appreciate that he's taking this one step, even if he's not taking that step. The rabbi said, that's amazing. Would you mind, he says, would you mind keeping me updated? I know, he says, that there'll be big changes. Would you mind keeping me updated? It's only another month or two before he gets a phone call from this young rabbi. And the rabbi says, I gave you my word, I want you to know that uh, the other day, there was a knock at the door after the shiur, and standing at the door is this man and his wife. And the wife says, I never came over before, but I just want to tell you, since my husband had started coming to the shi'ur, I've seen unbelievable changes in him. He's married my sister. No, I'm joking, right? This is a little joke. Unbelievable changes in the way he treats me, the way he speaks to the children, uh, the way he conducts himself, his business has been more successful, just been so much beracha in our lives. And this is not me, and this is not what I believe in, and it's not what I was raised to do, but I see that it works. Would you mind coming over one night to our house? We've decided to kosher our entire kitchen. Still not wearing the kippah. We decided to kosher the kitchen. Amazing. That's fantastic. He says, keep me involved. Keep me updated. It's Erev Rosh Shana. The man calls me and says, I promised I would keep you updated. I just want you to know that before Erev Rosh Shana, it's the beginning of the school year, this man and his wife, they took their children, each and every one of their children. They pulled them out of the non-religious school in town. And every one of those kids is now going to a religious Jewish school. Still not wearing his kippah. But he's changed his whole life. My friends, I don't know the end of the story, but I could probably guess that the man changed everything about his life. And what was the last thing that he changed? His kippah. You know why? It wasn't about the kippah. The whole thing had one condition. His entire growth trajectory had one condition. Will they accept me without a kippah? Tzitzi you put on because you can't see. But will they accept me? And now my kitchen's kosher, but my, I still not wearing a kippah. Is someone going to say something? Are they going to treat me differently? But that's the way that you treat, that you grow, that you give a second chance, that you raise someone to change an element of their life. There's something that's wrong, okay. Accept that part and change everything else. That will come too. Um, this method of education, it requires a little bit more thought. A little bit more planning. But my friends, never miss a chance to be able to teach your kids without saying a word. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.